Hey everybody, it's me for Girlie here, and today we're back with another Best Value Vax demo. This time we'll be testing out the 2 liter rotary evaporator or Rotovap from Best Value Vax. The purpose of a Rotovap is to recover the ethanol from your winterized cannabis or organic material extract. While a series of heat, fans, or vacuum ovens can achieve this, simply evaporating your ethanol can become costly very quick, and a Rotovap can recover nearly all of the ethanol left over in your dissolved extraction. There are eight basic components to a Rotovap. The control unit, the rotary drive, the lift jack, the hot water bath, the condenser, the receiving flask, the vacuum valve, and as you see here, the evaporation flask. The control unit allows you to adjust the temperature of the water bath and speed of the rotation of the evaporation flask. Best Value Vax recommends you set the heat bath to 113 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius and the RPM of your evaporation flask should be right around 100. The rotary drive is a system that controls the physical rotation of your evaporation flask. The lift jack raises and lowers your evaporation flask in and out of the hot water bath. The hot water bath keeps your flask and extract at the desired temperature. The condenser recondenses your evaporated solvent into a liquid. The receiving flask collects all of the recondensed solvent for you to reuse. The vacuum valve allows you to manually adjust the vacuum level in the system, although you could purchase a vacuum regulator to do this automatically. And the evaporation flask, which will contain your finished and unfinished extract. In addition to this basic rotovap setup, you will need a way to chill the liquid inside of your condensing tubes, as well as a safe way to pull a vacuum. Special pumps are made for situations like this, but the most inexpensive way I've found to efficiently run a rotovap without a chiller and an expensive pump is a simple water aspirator. This water aspirator not only pulls a small vacuum, but it also recirculates cold water through the condenser. One thing I should note about the aspirator, however, is that after a half hour or so of use, the water will begin to heat up. So you can either swap the warm water with cold water or occasionally add ice cubes to the water. Either will work fine and keep you well within your budget. If you do have the budget, however, a Welch diaphragm pump and a polyscience chiller would be the way to go. You should also include a cold trap if you want to be safe and save your pump, and a simple glass one should do the trick if you have dry ice handy. Check out my Buckner Funnel winterization video for more information on that. Now that you know what the parts of the Rotovap are and what other items you might need, let's take a look at my process. First and foremost, always make sure you clean your unit in between runs, just as you should with any extraction equipment. If you do not sterilize your equipment, you could potentially pull over contaminants from previous runs, including unseen chemicals like pesticides or molds. Once you have a clean system, fill your hot water bath and aspirator or chiller with water. I prefer to use reverse osmosis in both. Make sure your water is as cold as possible in the aspirator or set your chiller to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Turn on your hot water bath to your desired temperature and it should be just about ready by the time you are ready to turn on the rotator. Make sure all of your connections are tight and in the right place. Your condenser should be filled from the top down, so push water from your aspirator or chiller outlet to the top of the condenser and the bottom of the condenser to the inlet line. Lastly, connect the vacuum hose to your vacuum port and ensure you have the vacuum valve installed and closed. Some vacuum ports have elongated tubes that allow you to add more material directly to your evaporating flask while still using the machine. Pretty nice if you have too much material or too small of a rotovap. Ensure your receiving flask is connected properly using the provided clamp, then fill up your evaporation flask with the winterized material. Keep in mind that you should only fill your flask to half of its capacity. For example, with this 2 liter rotovap setup, I should only be running about 1 liter of material at a time. This is a good time to have a funnel handy, and Best Value Vax makes a 120 milliliter glass funnel that fits perfectly. Just don't pour your extract too fast or it will bubble up all over the place and cause quite the sticky mess. Carefully connect your evaporation flask to the receiving end of the rotary drive and carefully secure it with the provided clip. Double check and make sure your clip is securely attached before lowering or turning on the motor to ensure you do not break your flask and ruin your material. Once you are certain everything is securely in place, turn on your water aspirator or chiller and pump and begin to recirculate the cold water through the condenser and pull a slight vacuum. Most vacuum pumps will be overkill for a rotovap, so make sure you either pay attention and manually adjust your vacuum or purchase a vacuum regulator. You should never pull a full vac, and most will keep their vac below 15 hg. Now that the cold water is recirculating and your vacuum has been pulled, you are now ready to lower the evaporation flask into the hot water bath and slowly turn the motor dial. As previously mentioned, you want it to run at around 100 RPMs, but it does not have to be precise. 
The best way to learn is to try different specs out so see what suits your process best. After a few minutes you will notice drops of ethanol begin to collect on your condensing coils and drop into your receiving flask. Not only is this a sign that you have begun your solvent evaporation and collection, but its inverse is the sign that you are done. Once your coils have stopped dripping, you will be near completion. This process can take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours depending on your setup, but I have been recovering over a liter of solvent in under an hour with this setup. Once you are confident the vast majority of solvent has been recovered from your extract, turn off the rotary drive and raise your evaporation flask out of the hot water bath. Carefully remove the clip and gently remove your evaporation flask. Remember that you have pulled a vacuum on the system and this will cause the glass to momentarily hold together. You can use vacuum grease to help with this problem, but it is vital that you clean all of the grease off before pouring your extract to avoid contamination. Once the glass has been cleaned, carefully tilt your flask upside down with a collection vessel under it to begin collecting your extract. It will pour much slower now that most of the ethanol has been removed and its viscosity significantly reduced and it would be wise to invest in a tripod stand and three finger clamp to do this for you. Otherwise you'll be sitting there holding it for quite some time. Once all the extract has been removed from the evaporation flask, your ethanol recovery is complete. From here you will want to purge the extract in your vacuum oven for a short period of time to remove the last of the solvent left in your extract as there will still be thousands of PPMs contained within. The alternative is to decarboxylate the extract which will ultimately vaporize the rest of the remaining solvent convert the THCA into THC, and, unfortunately, destroy many of the terpenes. However, this is the next step in the Extracting Your Extract series, one that is required for the short path distillation of cannabis. And that's what we'll get into in the next video in this series, and I'm excited to bring you the next level of cannabis extraction and purification. Until then, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube to be the first to watch, follow me on Instagram at Fergoli Farms for more tech talk and garden updates, Check me out at Fergroli.com and on Weed Maps for my entire menu of medicine. Comment below and let me know what you think about this process so far and share your experiences if you have them. Until next time, good luck and grow big.